Thank you all for coming to our Festival of India. It's really wonderful to see such enthusiastic response from all the people of Copenhagen, Denmark, Scandinavia. It's really great. Actually, I'm from England. He said, that he, he said I was from America, but I'm from England. Made in England. Uh, how do you say? Uh, made in England. Export item. It's, so, export quality. So, I want a microphone, please. Should I stand up there? Yeah, okay. I want to sing a song. This should actually work. Tara said, if I press that, it will work. Uh, will it? That's the thing. I want to amplify this. So, my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, uh, <clears throat> created a worldwide revolution, actually, by introducing a new civilization in the West. And uh, he introduced it as a cultural movement, dancing, chanting, singing, and also literature and food. So you're experiencing that, nice food, spiritual food, dancing and singing. So I, my duty is also as a sannyasi, as a renounced order of life, try to give something of the teachings of my spiritual master. So please don't go away, I, I'll try and make it accessible to you. In, in a in a real way. So, my spiritual master always used to sing one song, a very nice song actually, before all his classes. Don't go. And uh, sometimes I think that this song it contains everything that we need to know uh, if it's explained properly. Parasharam? This is not working. There's a button here. Parasharam Prabhu. Maybe give me another mic. No? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah, yeah, it'll work. Let's take this one off. So, uh, so this song is called... We, we, in, in Hare Krishna we call it Jai Radha Madhava. Everyone please say. Jaya Radha Madhava. Just take this. Jaya Radha Madhava. So this is one of the names of the Supreme. Or, or if you like, the Big Bang. Some people say the Supreme was a, a Big Bang. An infinitely small, infinitely dense something or other which exploded. May I look at you, so um, May I look at you, this Radha Madhava name is a name for that. <coughs> but uh, does anybody think that uh, if we took a a bunch of dynamite. I'm not supposed to talk about these things because uh, very sensitive topic. I hope there's no uh, police watching or CIA or anything. But if I took a, a whole bunch of dynamite or explosive and mixed it with a, a big pile of sand, a big pile of cement and a whole lot of water would I get Copenhagen? Yes or no? Hands up those who would say yes. From a big explosion, I would get Copenhagen? Yes or no? Hands up those who are yes. Hands up no. Hands up no who thinks it's highly unlikely by an explosion with all the cement and sand and what, we will get Copenhagen. Or even a small building. 
or even anything. Some word, we, we explode some word and rubber and still we get a rathiatric. No, it's not going to happen. It's not reasonable. But there's some, something else has to be there in the explosion or the creation, whatever you call it. And what can we say that is, we can put it down to consciousness. We're more than just a bunch of chemicals. Uh, frankly, if somebody died here, we don't want anyone. Anybody wants to die here? No. Hands up those who want. Nobody wants to die. But if somebody did, then after a few days, there would be a bad smell. What is this bad smell? The body will be rotting away because the consciousness is gone. You know, the life is gone. Then you might have the most beautiful girlfriend. Who has a beautiful girlfriend? Anybody? Yes. So, or a beautiful boyfriend. When he's dead, you don't want to touch him. Something happening to that body, decomposition. So it seems that that consciousness is the essential thing which keeps everything together. Even these buildings they require maintenance. So when we, this, when we say this song, Radha Madhava, Loudly, please, loudly, please. Radha Madhava. Ah, that means that consciousness, the supreme consciousness, which is binding everything together in the universe. So the sun, the planets, everything is going around in a good order. So uh, just like in, so this is obvious. Kunjabi Hari. So Kunjabi Hari means. This is actually a description of a higher reality. In the Bhagavad Gita, this is an ancient wisdom text. There are many, many ancient wisdom texts like Quran, Bible, uh, Torah. This is another one called Bhagavad Gita or the Song of God. Gita means song, Bhagavad means of God. It's a book of wisdom. And um, in this book, it's explained about the higher nature. In the 11th chapter, sorry, 15th chapter, in Sanskrit, ancient, the mother of all languages, it says, Urdva Mulam Adashakam. Aswatam Praham Avyayam Chandansi Yasya Panani Yastu Veda Savedavit. He says, There is a tree. Just see this tree here. Very nice tree. A sycamore? Maybe what's this tree? I don't know. My eyes are bad. But there is a tree with its roots upwards and its branches down. Have you ever seen a tree? Has anyone ever seen a tree? with its roots upwards and it branches down. Hands up, you should know in Denmark or in Sweden, you've seen many of these. Any hands up? Where do you see this tree? You know, we all know you know, you're a Hare Krishna. Anyone out there has ever seen a tree with its roots upwards and its branches down? Hmm? No, in a cartoon, in a reflection by the bank of the sea or the fjord or the lake, you see many trees that are growing up, but in the reflection on the water, you see upside down tree, isn't it? So <clears throat> in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains that this reality we have here is a reflection of the real reality, the permanent reality. This reality is impermanent, just like a dream. So Kunja Vihari, this absolute person, this absolute consciousness is enjoying an absolute landscape. It's called Vrindavan. There's a spiritual, just like uh, just like the tree on the bank of the lake, there's a real tree. So what is the real tree to this tree? 
There's been some movies about this, Matrix. There was another one called Tron. Some guy goes inside a computer and he lives inside the computer, tries to find his father. But there's a real world outside. So actually we're living in an unreal world. Shall I prove it? Shall I prove it? Just like at night. Hands up those who dream. Has anybody had a dream? Yeah. And do you remember your beautiful wife, your beautiful kids, your nice car and your house when you're dreaming? Not very often. You can do by chance. But more often you're away in some other place, other country with another beautiful woman, another having a fantasy world. And it's real. You forget you are Danish. You forget that you're this or that. You're flying in the sky, swimming in the ocean like a dolphin. You're king of Denmark. Something crazy. So, and then when you wake up, you forget your dream. Isn't it? You, you, after a few minutes, you go, oh, that was a great dream, blah, blah, blah. Finish. Dream is gone. So what is the real world? This is the question. What is the real world? Where do I really belong? I don't belong in a dream, and I don't belong in a waking, because there's another dream, a daydream. I only last for maximum 70. Anybody here is 70 years old? One or two people. Anyone here 80 years old? Anyone 90 years old? Anyone here 100 years old? Forget it. They're all gone. So unfortunate, that's the facts of life. So there's a 100% death rate. It's a problem. So it's unreal. What we're experiencing in night dream and day dream is unreal. So this song, which Prabhupada used to sing before every class on Bhagavad Gita, on the ancient wisdom texts, uh, is a song about the higher reality, about the supreme consciousness, supreme persons, supreme persons, Radha Madhava. So, next line, Jai Radha Madhava. Kunja Bihari, Gopi Janabalava. You all know it. I think. I think there's no local people here. I think this is all Indian community from far off. Or oh, you've just come to live here. Actually, Gopi Janabalava. This this reality is full of lovers. We all want to fall in love with somebody. But unfortunately, the love which we experience with one another is fleeting. You know, personally I experienced also, before I joined Hare Krishna, I had a few lovers, a female, and, uh, and it was very traumatic how I tried to give my love in my childhood, in my youthhood, and so on. And of course, I saw my parents. They were married for 60 years. They had their diamond wedding anniversary for 60 years, married couple. But then, death to death to, till us part. Death parted them. And then where did they go? What happened to their love? See, this is a problem. So, in the spiritual world, there are people who have a loving relationship with Radha Madhava or Krishna permanently, or Jagannath. It's the same person, Radha Madhava. It's Jagannath. And he has brother and sister. Their love affair is permanent. No beginning, no end. And full of variety. So that's another aspect of this song. Gopi Jana Balava, loudly please. Gopi Jana Balava, Giri Bharat Hari. Now you won't believe this. You'll think this. I'm crazy when I tell you this. This is about Jagannath. When Jagannath was a little boy, he appeared on this planet. I mean, 
Jagannath appeared as a little boy on this planet called Krishna. He lived on this planet in a town called Vrindavan, south of Delhi. You can go to that place. There was a terrible ecological problem. His father was making a big sacrifice to please the rain god. And the rain god was expecting a sacrifice for himself. But Krishna said, no. You just offer to the hill and you offer to the devotees, the saintly persons. Uh, don't worry about this demigod Indra, the god of rain. Forget him. And so the god of rain became very angry. He poured torrential rainstorm, hailstorm, winds. He was flooding the whole area. So what did little Krishna do, age six? What did he do? He picked up a mountain about 20 miles long and two or three thousand feet high and he held it on his little finger for a week like an umbrella. So we like miracles. We had some uh, conjuring tricks, some magic. But can you do this magic? Float a mountain on the tip of your finger, a whole amount in little finger, for a week? Nobody can do. So Krishna could do. You can do, okay. But can you float the planets? Can you float the moon, the sun, the stars also? There's nothing for Krishna, even though he was a little boy. So you can read all about this miracle. So Krishna is called Giri Bharat Hari. Krishna means actually that original consciousness, the original person so who's making everything work, the all-pervading consciousness within our own heart. He has many aspects, a great science. So Giri Bharat, Giri Bharat Hari. Yashoda Nandana. So every, does anybody here not have a mom and dad? Does anybody here not have a mother? Everybody has a mother. So that quality of having a mother must have been there in the supreme source of everything. It's the source of all mothers. So therefore, <coughs> Krishna also can have a mother. The absolute truth can also have a mother. And she is called Yashoda. And Krishna is also called Nandana. He's called the beloved son of Mother Yashoda. So it's very, very amazing. Yashoda Nandana, Brajajana Ranjana. And what does Krishna do? You can read about it in our books. He enjoys in the landscape, in the spiritual world. Spiritual world is not just according to this song and according to Bhagavad Gita. This, the so-called spiritual world, is more variegated, is more beautiful, is more full of variety than this world. So what are we doing here? Why do we want to stick around in this place which is only temporary, full of disease, old age and death? It's a waste of time. Let us get a higher standard of living. Now we've got a standard of dying. We want to have a higher standard of dying. Okay, let me go to a nice hospital, I'll be injected, I'll have drip feed and this and that. I'm only going to die anyway. So everything in this world is a waste of time. Let's face it. Why do we face up to reality? So this song is saying, no, parastas matabhavani, there's a higher nature. Where having gone, you need never have to return. Just like in the prison. I'm sorry to get serious here. I mean, we're having a good time. Dances and music and everything. But sometimes we have to be serious. And we have to think about life. What are we doing here? It's like a prison. I, I wrote a song recently. You want to hear it? It's my own song. But I'll, I'll sing just at one line of it. Life is like a prison. Getting older every day. What did I do to deserve this? Got to make my getaway. We're in a prison. Birth, old age, disease and death. Who can escape? 
by taking to Krishna consciousness, by hearing about Krishna through bhakti yoga and devotional service, by singing these songs, the eternal attraction for Krishna is awakened in our heart. It's there. Dormant love for Krishna is there. But our modern civilization is not teaching this. You go to college, you go to university, anywhere. They're not teaching you who I am, where do I belong, why I have to grow old, why I have to die. They're cheating us. Do you realize we're being cheated by this modern civilization? We're being cheated. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who started this movement 500 years ago, he said, Bharata Bhumite Hoyla Manusya Janmaya. Those who are born in India or in this Indian culture, they should know this science and they should teach this para upakar for the welfare of the whole world. It's a duty of the Indian community, whether it's here, especially the duty of the Indian community, whether it's here in Denmark, Sweden, England, anywhere, to support this preaching of, of reality so that people can stop suffering in the prison. We may be here, and I tell you, I'm preaching in Congo a lot of the time. I know you don't like this, it's time to leave. I'm preaching in Congo, Africa, and they consider we have a low standard of living. If only I could come to Denmark, if only I could get a visa for Sweden, if only I could go to America, I would be happy. How stupid can people be? Because if I change from being a fifth-class prisoner to a third-class prisoner to a first-class prisoner, what's the, how does it solve anything? You're still a prisoner. This body has to grow old, this body has to die. But in this song, which is being sung, there's a reality being described where there's no old age, there's no disease, there's no birth, there's no death. And that is where we belong. So the colleges and universities have to start seriously not cheating the people with this modern education, saying you will be happy if you get your MA, PhD, stupid qualification, and you spend your life going to the pub, having girlfriends, growing old and dying. And according to Bhagavad Gita, you have to take another birth, another birth, another birth according to your karma. You're, with your qual modern qualification at university, you'll not solve any problem of life. You just have to rot in this material world, according to our consciousness. Bhagavad Gita is saying, according to your mind at the time of death, you will get a body to suit that mind. You can become a fish, you can become a dog, you can become a tree. You, who's this guy standing here? Can you see this man standing here? It's about 30 feet high with green leaves. He was from Copenhagen, yeah, and he has to stand there in the cold, in the wind, in the sun for maybe a hundred years before they cut him down. Dogs passing water on him every day. What a, what a life! So now the human form of life is a special opportunity to get out of this. Get out of this birth, death, old age and disease. This is real knowledge. This, by, this Krishna Conscious Movement is trying to give real knowledge to society and it's meant for the leaders. And unfortunately, we didn't have the Queen of Denmark to start this Rathiyatra festival. I hope that ISKCON in Denmark will organize next year to at least invite the Queen to sweep in front of the car to, to you know, show her allegiance to God to show that she's a servant of God, or if not the Queen, the Prime Minister, or some leading citizen of Denmark. And because this knowledge is meant for the leaders of society. It says in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 2. Shall I read something from Bhagavad Gita? I'm sorry to get serious, but you know what to do. I'm, this is my duty. Uh, we have to get serious sometimes in life. Chapter, oh, this is a, I can't read this, it's your language. Really. Okay, this is English. Chapter 4, text 2. Uh, 
I hope you'll all get this book. We have a book stall over there. Your book library, your home cannot be complete without this wisdom text. It was spoken 5,000 years ago. Personally, I found much more in this 800 verses, 700 verses, than in the Bible and Quran. Everything was more clear, explained, scientifically, logically. You could really take it on. So, in the chapter 4, uh, Krishna says, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god, Vivasvan, and Vivasvan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, and Manu in turn instructed it to Ikshvaku. This, this supreme science of the relationship with the living being and the supreme living being and nature was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession and the saintly kings, the presidents, the prime ministers and so on understood it in that way. But in course of time the succession was broken and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost. So my spiritual master, he saw that this knowledge was lost. Nobody was caring about this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, they didn't understand it. So he brought it to the West and he delivered it in English and so many other literatures. So that the leaders of society, so if any of you know a leader of Denmark, maybe you're a friend of the Queen or a friend of a friend of the Queen, especially if you're from India, uh, because this is your duty as an Indian, Indian body or Indian culture, you have to give this knowledge to the people of, of uh, Denmark or Sweden or wherever you are. It doesn't matter even if you're not in the, Everybody has this duty of a human form of life to save people who are suffering from birth, old age, disease and death. Just like if you have the cure for AIDS. You have AIDS in Denmark or you have cancer. I have the cure for cancer and I keep it to myself. What would you think? Everyone's dying of cancer, cardiac arrest. If I discovered the cure, actually I know the cure but nobody will listen to me. Uh, I have to tell everybody that's to be kind to other people. So please, let's improve things in Denmark. Let's give this knowledge to all the people in Denmark. Let's make a plot, a conspiracy. Let's make a conspiracy, a secret conspiracy. Don't let anybody hear about it, okay? Else we might get in trouble. Oh, we're making a revolution against this materialistic culture. What will they do with us? Huh. So anyway, that's our idea. Why do we bring Jagannath out on the streets? To remind us that we have a, a mission in this human form of life to get everyone free from this prison house of birth, old age, disease and death. So this song, which we're going to sing now, sorry it's taking a long time, and uh, it's a nice song. Prabhupada always used to sing it. Oh, I've always, let's sing it quickly, I'm running out of time. Some musicians, please. Madanga, cartels. Madanga. Please repeat after me. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari This is yoga. If you're standing, then it helps your ears to absorb. This is called back to yoga. Helps you to concentrate on hearing. Dance, everybody. Left over right, right over left. Yashoda Yashoda Nanda 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 
Please take one home with you for a friend. If you don't take one for yourself, and give it to a friend. If you like, I'll sign it. I'll ruin the book for you with my signature. Uh, but I'm happy to do that if you want. It's my signature's worth approximately one million dollars each. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Sila Baba Parke. Jai. Jai. Hello.